Who are you allowing to influence you? Are they challenging you, inspiring you, pushing you forward? You don't have time to waste with people that bring out the worst in you. Life is flying by. We don't get a do-over. This is it. Well, what if I hurt their feelings? What if you miss your destiny? What if they keep you from becoming who you were created to be? They may not want it bad enough. They may be okay with mediocrity, compromise, and barely getting by in life. That's their choice, but that's not who you are. You have seeds of greatness. You're destined to leave your mark. You weren't created to fit in, to be average, to live with addictions, dysfunction, lack, struggle. You were created to stand out in the crowd, to be a cut above. Now do your part and distinguish yourself. Be willing to do what others won't do. Yes, it takes discipline. Yes, you have to say no to carnal desires, but the pain of discipline is less than the pain of regret. It's hard to bite your tongue, not say what you feel, but that pain is less than the pain of having someone you love walk away. It's hard to lay off the junk food, things that are not good for you. That pain is less than the pain of not being healthy. It's hard to break away from a friend that's pulling you down, but that pain is less than not reaching your dreams. One of the saddest things is to come to the end of life and wonder what I could have become. What if I wouldn't have let those people talk me out of my miracle? What if I would have broken away from those friends that were causing me to compromise? Where would I be? What if I would have treated my spouse with respect? What if I would have taken that step of faith in my career and not played it safe all the time? You don't have to wonder. You can start right now. It is not too late to become who God's created you to be. And the only way you can set the example is you have to always be willing to work. I don't follow people who talk about what they used to do in life. I don't give a fuck what you used to do. I don't care that like, you know you used to be the bass mother. I don't care. What are you doing today? You may not be that person now, but what are you still doing to try to excel in life? And a lot of people now are talking. I hear so much talk. I don't hear a lot of work. I hear a lot of people telling you what you should be doing, how you should be doing it, how you should be fucking living. And I look at them and you're fat, you're out of shape, you look like shit, but you tell the motherfucker how to live. No, man, I won't listen to you. There's so many people speaking this shit, and that's what bothered me a lot in the military. There's a lot of people talking shit. I don't see the real suffering behind it, behind what you're saying. That's why I said, man, you talk with so much passion because it's a real fucking place. It sucks to get up in the morning time. It was raining like cats and dogs. I want to get my shoes on and go run. But guess what? I got my shoe on and ran. We all have time. We all have time. What you've done wrong is that you, you didn't prioritize yourself. You didn't prioritize that, look, motherfucker, I got to get up and win this war today against myself. I need to look better. I need to feel better. I need to eat better. I need to prioritize time. We waste so much time on our little gadgets. It's unreal. And we talk about we have no time. If you really take, you have to take your day and write, write down this one day. Everything we do, write that down. And you're like, my God, I am wasting so much time on frivolous bullshit. It's not even funny. I mean, it will, it will, if it doesn't infuriate you, it should. Because there's so much time. I can't get it in. Look at your schedule. You're just wasting seven hours today on bullshit. I mean, and you'll have an hour a day to try to get something in for yourself. I guarantee everybody can find an hour. It's, it's fucking miserable. It, it is miserable. I mean, to get up every day or five days a week, whatever, when it's snowing, shiny, not, not shiny, not, not, not comfortable, and to go in the gym and work out when you don't want to go to the gym, it is not fun. You want it very fast. If you don't see results in the first two days or the first week, I'm done. That's the mentality of most people. The struggle is too real. We're not patient. We, like in a world where you can Google the best restaurants around me right now, no one is patient. And for you to lose weight, for you to stop drinking, if you wear the hell you're going through, it takes a lot of patience, a lot of time, and a lot of pitfalls, a lot of plateaus. You hit so many fucking plateaus. If you don't know how to get around that plateau, it's not going to happen fast. Here we are as one 
consciousness being systematically divided and played off against each other. So we are in conflict and division and a few hands on the strings of all sides can play us off against each other and therefore go on driving the human family into a Orwellian global dystopia up to this point unchallenged because we're too busy fighting ourselves we're not supposed to know that we are all one because the potential for people coming together in common cause is too great coming together in common cause to demand freedom we are not looking at random events what is happening now has not just come out of nowhere it's been planned for enormous amounts of time and, uh, and through this process, everything has been put into place so that it can be played out now. As that which has been in the hidden all these decades, all these centuries, has now entered the room and put itself on public display. What is life? And what is the meaning of life? Does life even have a meaning? Life is consciousness, and it is learning to understand what this consciousness is, what it means, and also to understand where this consciousness lies, where it exists in the realm of things. People will say, well, it exists within your head, within your brain. But even as you say this, you know that the statement simply can't be true because it's just too big. All that thought and all that memory. Just stop and look inside yourself and truly perceive your thoughts just for a moment. It's so vast, this realm of space that lies within consciousness. It feels like a whole universe in there, doesn't it? And yet it lies within in tangible nothingness. And it feels like that, because that's exactly what it is. Nothing. Nothingness. But consciousness. It's certainly something worth considering. And what is nothingness? Well, Alan Watts summed it up more than eloquently in a statement he made when he said that nothing is what your head looks like to your eyes and that that nothingness is what's watching. And I truly can't think of a better description. Nothingness, consciousness, coexists in that space behind your eyes. You can't have something here without having that nothing there. So you need to be aware of that nothingness. The nothingness that lies behind your eyes because it is within that nothingness that lies consciousness. And that's all connected. It's connected to ourselves, it's connected to each other, and it's connected to everything in the universe. You need to open your mind to see this. And once you've seen it, the more you can begin to realize it. And the more you realize it, you can quite literally feel it physically, like a warmth and a rise in frequency in your body. The true realization that there is no other there is only one, and all that truly exists within that singularity is love.